Good morning. To those of you who are here in the church and to those who are watching online, thank you for joining us as we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent, known as Rejoice Sunday. Again, this week we are encouraged by our Advent theme to find Jesus in the darkness around us. Today, we light the rose-colored candle on our Advent wreath, which represents a lightening of our road towards Christmas Day, and is also a reminder of the wondrous things to come. In addition, we remember Our Lady of Guadalupe, who on this day, almost 500 years ago, appeared to San Juan, Di Juan Diego in Mexico offering the message of Christian charity and peace to the Americans. Today, we commemorate how Our Lady of Guadalupe is a gateway towards greater joy in Christ. Please remember to silence your cell phones so that we can worship God without distraction. Thank you. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Francis, and the preacher is Father Isaiah Mary.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Beloved brothers and sisters, on this third Sunday of Advent, we have the even greater uh, uh, added joy of celebrating Our Lady of Guadalupe, the apparitions in um, Mexico in the uh, 1531. So my dear, dear brothers and sisters, as we enter now into these Advent mysteries, let us call to mind, oh wait, I have to do, I have to do this part first. Um, <laughs> This third Sunday of Advent, also known in Latin as Gaudete Sunday, in English, Gaudete is rejoice, we are filled with joy as we draw closer to celebrating the birth of Jesus 2,000 years ago and his rebirth in our hearts today. Once again, we ask Our Lady of Guadalupe to pray for us and to lead us to her son, Jesus, the source of our joy and the light of our lives. At this time, um, I invite the Ali family forward. We will now light the third candle of Advent, the rose-colored candle that symbolizes joy. May this candle bring us the joyful awareness of Christ within us. May sorrow and mourning flee before him, and may we follow the preaching of St. John the Baptist, repent of our sins, treat others with respect and compassion, and prepare a way for Jesus to enter our hearts more deeply this Advent season. Holy God, we ask that our prayer rise up to you like incense through your Son, Emmanuel, God with us forever and ever. Amen. People faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity. Enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you as one sings of festivals. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The Word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The crowds asked John the Baptist, what should we do? He said to them in reply, whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, teacher, what should we do? He answered them, stopped collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, and what is it that we should do? He told them, do not practice extortion, do not falsely accuse anyone, and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I'm baptizing you with water. But one mightier than I is coming. I'm not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. So, dear friends, we have entered the third week of Advent. The rose candle is lit. We're hearing more Christmas carols. The malls are getting fuller. The preparations for Christmas Day is well underway. Yet, uh, with Christmas about 13 days away, we have this beautiful day, this beautiful occasion, this day where we celebrate our mother appearing on the North American continent, coming to the people of Mexico, bearing the title, Our Lady of Guadalupe. Our Blessed Mother brings, like a prophet, the great message of joy to our people. And on this Gaudate Sunday, this Rejoice Sunday, our mother the Mother of God brings us the beautiful message of joy. And joy is not simply and only an emotion like anger or happiness or sadness, whatever, but rather joy is, 
is closer to a state of being. Joy is closer to the state of being. Joy is the acknowledgement in our heart of hearts that God resides in the depths of my soul. No matter what the situation, no matter what we have done, no matter our place in life, joy is that unwavering conviction that God is present in the depths of our hearts. And because of this, so is the fulfillment of every one of God's promises. And knowing that God is always and always will be present to us in this radical way, this is something that should overwhelm us with immense joy. And it is this joy, this presence of God among us and within us, that Our Lady of Guadalupe brings to us today. There are so many ways of why and how she brings joy to us. I mean, for one thing, we can just reflect back on the very story of Our Lady Guadalupe and Juan Diego. Many of us here, we know that story very well already. But the story, and the story, as we know, is, is filled with intrigue and mysteries and, and that overlay of God's presence and that overlay of joy. For instance, when Our Lady ordered Juan Diego to once again go to Bishop Zemaraga to tell him to build a shrine dedicated to Our Lady, Mary herself goes to Juan Diego's uncle, goes to Juan Bernardino, who is ailing. And the family is fearful for Juan Diego's uncle's life. Yet while Juan Diego is pleading with the bishop, Our Lady appeared to Juan Diego's uncle and cured him of his fever. So quite literally, dear friends, quite literally, Our Lady of Guadalupe brought the healing joy of Christ to this man. What wonderful news. And moreover, many of us would know the aftermath of the apparitions concerning Our Lady Guadalupe. According to one source, after the apparition, over nine million people converted to the church in a matter of seven years. Nine million people over the course of seven years, thanks to Our Lady Guadalupe. And though her image, admittedly, has been misused over the years, she was nonetheless instrumental, integral, if not crucial, in transforming the society filled with bloody sacrifice and war into a society founded on the bloodless sacrifice of Christian altars. A society that taught Christian charity and care for the outcast. So how does... Mary bring about this gospel joy? Her very presence, her words of comfort, brought about Christ's healing and his presence and his joy into the hearts of the people of Mexico. Of course, Our Lady brings joy to us in other ways. And another way that Mary brings the gospel joy is by her very relationship with God. Her very relationship with God. Mary knows and what and who she is. And this brings and teaches us how to live the life of joy. She defined herself by one thing alone, by one relationship alone, the relationship between herself and the triune God. Her entire life was rooted in this relationship with God, with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And she lived to examine, to meditate, to contemplate what this relationship meant for her. She doesn't define herself by her accolades or by her titles or her last name, not by her bank account or how many followers she has on social media, whatever, what have you. She allows herself to to be defined by one thing, and that one thing only, her relationship with God as a beloved daughter. This is what drives and defines our Blessed Mother to this very day, that she is a beloved child of God. God calling her full of grace. This is the only affirmation she ever needed. And it is this relationship, this affirmation of being full of grace. It was the affirmation that allowed her to persevere through all the floods and trials and criticisms that soon came. Those uncomfortable glances during her pregnancy, traveling to Bethlehem nine months pregnant, sleeping in a cave, fleeing to Egypt, this dark side of Christmas. It was these, it, what allowed Mary to persevere 
was not her job or her titles or last name, whatever, what have you, but the one thing that kept her grounded, kept her authentic, kept her humble. This dynamic, loving, unpredictable relationship with God. This is what defines the Blessed Mother to this day, that she is a beloved child of God. Trials and tribulations, they come and go. We know this. Yet her relationship with God the Father kept her founded and steady. So how does Mary teach us about gospel joy? She allows her relationship as a daughter of God to define her. And her life teaches us how to do the same. So how does Mary bring us the message of joy? For one thing, she brought healing to North America. Secondly, she knew what defined her, this relationship with God. And thirdly, Mary brings joy by giving birth to joy himself. We look again towards the image of Our Lady Guadalupe. According to Aztec iconography and Aztec society, having a black sash around a woman's waist means that she's pregnant. And being that it's December 12th and Jesus' birthday is on December 25th, she is eight and a half months along. She's very much, very much pregnant. And as an aside, it's amazing to think of how miraculous it was of how much patience and gentleness and compassion that Mary had towards Juan Diego despite of all his anxiety during this time. Yet despite that, quite literally, Mary gave birth to the joy of the world. Mary gave birth to joy. And through our very lives, dear friends, we who are to receive the Eucharist in our heart of hearts, we too are impregnating ourselves with joy himself. We take in the body and blood of Christ in order to cleanse our hearts, to prepare him room, in order that Christ may be born anew in, in the depths of our souls. And not only is Christ born within us, Mary shows how Christ may be born through us for the sake of offering healing, for the sake of offering compassion, to offer authentic Christian peace throughout our world to our neighbors and our brothers and sisters. So how does Mary bring about this message of joy? Through her very pregnancy, she reminds us how to prepare him room in the depths of ourselves so we can have Christ reborn within and through us as we prepare for Christmas Day. Dear friends, the Lord Jesus, he comes to us once more. And once more, he is inviting us, inviting us to live a life overflowing with his joy. So through the intercession of so great a mother, may we be two instruments of God's healing and grace. May we be grounded in God's love and his devotion to us. And may we respond to that love. May we respond to that love that God has for us by giving and preparing him room in our heart of hearts so that on, when the day arrives, may we truly give birth to Christ in our heart of hearts on Christmas Day. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, was constant with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we await with joyful longing for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, we renew our devotion to him and call upon him in our need. That through the intercession of Our Lady of Guadalupe, Christ may fill the leaders of the Church with gentleness, compassion, and conviction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit of wisdom may guide the minds of those who govern us to promote the common good according to God's will, we pray to the Lord. Lord that Christ may guide us to the ministers of Christian joy, peace, and justice for all we encounter, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ may bring comfort for the sick and the dying, the distressed and those suffering from coronavirus and all other deadly diseases, we pray to the Lord. For Lucia Cabunok, for the internal repose of her soul, whom we remembered in a special way at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions in our Book of Intentions and those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Father in heaven, increase our longing for Christ our Savior and give us the grace to grow in love that the dawn of his coming may find us rejoicing in his presence and welcoming the light of his truth through Christ our Lord.
pray, dearly beloved brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with the angels and archangels, the thrones and dominions, all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be made to the, to your, may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Remember, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of your death, of your saving passion, the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, we may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Archbishop, and all the bishops and clergy and the entire people you have gathered, who you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion. O oh, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, especially at this Holy Mass, we raise up to you Lucia Kabunok, and all who at their passing from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord. 
on, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. To all of you here present and to all participating on live stream, let us turn to one another with love and share the sign of the peace of Christ. 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 God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> we implore your mercy, O Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for these announcements. You will find the uh, schedule for Christmas morning masses in today's bulletin. In the bulletin. You'll take it home. <laughs> You'll take the bulletin home. And, uh, and it's in there. Um, so you don't have to call. Um, if you would like to donate uh, $10,000, no, $10 in memory of a loved one, just $10 um, um, for a loved one uh, for the Christmas flowers this year, we will very much appreciate your donation and we will remember, uh, have the names of those who you, are, you ask to be remembered on the altar. Please put your money in the envelope with the name of your beloved on it and drop it in the collection um, or at the, in the parish mailbox. We ask for $10 per name. Next week, we will have the annual collection for Retirement Fund for Religious Sisters, Brothers, and Priests who have served the Catholic Church faithfully for many years. Simbanga B. It just sounds so delicious to me and so wonderful. <laughs> Simbangabi, the traditional Filipino pre-Christmas mass, will be celebrated this Friday, the 17th of December, at the 6 p.m. mass. All middle school youth are invited for the upcoming gathering on Thursday, December 16th. Um, and that's going to be at 7 o'clock in the adult education building, but we'll call it middle school education building for the occasion. And we will be celebrating Las Posadas uh, with great food and of course uh, treats, treats um, and activities. There are free Catholic calendars. You get a whole year for free. Um, it's, um, it's this coming year, actually, 2022 calendars are available in the parish office. Some of them are just lovely. They have these uh, pictures of, of, of pilgrimage sites in Rome um, and other places around the world. There are some really wonderful religious uh, ph photography. And um, Monday Bible study uh, with Darlene is postponed um, until January 24th. Um, so I saw her yesterday in the hospital, and, and uh, she could use all your prayers and uh, asked for, uh, for doing better. And uh, uh, Yvette has been, you know, very keeping close uh, tabs of her. Where's Yvette? Where are you? Oh, there you are. Oh. Um, so um, it will be pr uh, prayers for Darlene. Any more? Uh, announcements? No? Good. Okay. Let us stand then for the final prayer. Oh, thank you to Rudy and the choir. Thank you for your singing. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The peace and the blessing of Almighty God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.